Okay. <laughs> be doing something. Don't be sat there waiting. <laughs> like two chip them. Oh, we're on. <laughs> we're on. <laughs> Two guys. Ah, we've forgotten already. <laughs> <laughs> We're signing thank you notes to um, the various people who've helped us with our, our music video and um, the CD. Well, we know that the CD got delivered a couple of weeks ago. Did um, did we say whether or not the single had been released? It has indeed. Yesterday, the 26th of April. Yeah. Well, um, where would we be able to listen to that uh, signal? And, and what did they call it? It's called Hard Times. Uh -huh. And if you follow our links off Facebook, um, it will take you to our Bandcamp website, where you can download and buy it, or just listen to it, and also link you through to the other platforms on which it's streaming, such as Spotify. All right. Okay, well we can do that. And uh, Paul, you, you mentioned a music video there. Do, uh, have we got a music video? Is we that, have. Uh, I believe that that was uploaded to YouTube at about 1600 hours yesterday. 1600 hours? I believe so. Was that be 4 o'clock in the afternoon then? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what channel would that be on? That's well, YouTube on the Maybe Never channel. Or Maybe Never channel. Yeah. So we ought to ask really for you know the guys on this channel having watched for the last 18 months how we've made hard times to go and stream it and then go and watch the video on our sister channel maybe never absolutely absolutely right. correct yeah, yeah. well we shall do that shall we let's do that right consider haven't we it, just done that consider it done oh, potentially yes oh. So while we're doing this, guys, I suppose one of the questions that I want to ask is we've, we've been creating videos now for oh, perhaps 18 months of this journey. And it's culminated in the publication of this mm. CD, which should be coming out on the 24th of May. And... The single Hard Times has obviously, as we've just mentioned, been uploaded. I think we're planning on uploading the second single, which is Making Up Your Mind, in two weeks' time, which will be the 10th mm -hmm. of May. So check that out. That should be coming on the streaming platforms as well. How have you found the journey? What, what have you found to be the good bits, the highs, the lows of you know, putting together a CD? I think the hard part, can't call it a low, but is that in the meantime we've been so busy mixing, producing and making the best of the recordings we've got, fabulous end product by the way, um, that we haven't played. I've, yeah. missed, I've missed playing when we used to sit in the studio and play together, but this has been such an arduous journey and particularly for you putting together the YouTube channels and things um, that perhaps we've we haven't forgotten why we're together and, and what we do but it'd be nice to get back to it mm. where once this EP is uh, is out yeah no, no playing so it's all been uh, production hasn't it really yeah. Yeah. yeah what what's been interesting about the YouTube part of the journey is that because the original concept was, can three old farts make a record and get it into the charts without the support of a record label? Well, we're just over 24 hours into releasing our single. Not yet, is the answer. That. Now, we know that um, Taylor Swift had 300 million streams in her first day. No, no, no only 30 million. It was 300 million. Was it? Yeah. Well, I thought you put 30 million no, on the, on the website. Million. Okay. Uh, and currently now that's over a billion. As yeah. we stand on um, Spotify, I think we're at about 42. Million? Mm, sadly not, just 42. <laughs> okay. 
So I guess the question is, can Three Old Farts make a record and get it into the charts? Well, on current process, <laughs> probably well, not. It just depends how far down well, your chart goes. What I can uh, <laughs> announce to you guys is that within our first sort of 24 hours, we have earned 71 pence. We have had one person buy our single, which is available on Bandcamp, by the way. Um, so between the three of us, you know, could you say that that's a success? Well, it's better than nothing. It is indeed. <laughs> it is. People are listening. Um, not quite in their hundreds of millions. No. But um, that's what we do it for. We wanted to put our music out there, have people listen to it, and also create music that we like and we think is good quality. That's the most important. Yeah, and and with with the YouTube, and you know, we've got to thank you guys for following us on this journey for so so far. Um, we kind of realised that because we did a lot of the mixing tutorials on how we put together hard times, YouTube, in its great wisdom, have kind of mm -hmm. put us in that niche now, where unless we're doing videos on how to mix or master <coughs> anything else excuse the phone anything else doesn't seem to to get the same sort of views mm. but i think we want to stick with the channel's initial intention which was to chart the process and all we're aspects doing. of the journey absolutely yeah, not just the mixing what mm. we're doing now is part of that process and mm. the thank you cards are about you can't do this on your own mm. you know we've had to employ or ask friends of ours to come and help on the music side, whether that's Nyes on the sax or Nick playing bass, Gary who did vocals, and of course, uh, not forgetting Vernon. Um, but also, when we produced the music video, that was a huge amount of work, and there's absolutely no way we could have done that without the team that we put together. Yeah, and yeah. that goes all the way back to one of the very early videos that we did, which was not a very good quality video in itself, because the camera batteries ran out, um, was when we were discussing this journey, the very start of this journey. So, yeah. Can I just say there, the, you've put a, the credit list for all the people who took part in the filming and making of the video, and it's a very long list. Uh, and it is available at the bottom of the YouTube video. So if, if you're in any doubt how many people helped and how hard it was, just look at the length of that list. Yeah, yeah. And if you go to maybe Never's YouTube site and watch the music video on there, as you say, in the description below that, we have um, yeah. included all the credits, both for the production of the CD and of, of the music video. Yeah. So I guess the next question is, what's, what's the next step? We're from, you know, we're signing these uh, thank you cards today and these will be distributed to all the people that um, have contributed to putting all this together. What's the next step? I think we'll be uploading our second single very shortly, won't we? So it's another, another track from um, the EP. Um, after some discussion, we decided that making up your mind was probably the more commercial of the other tracks. And for the viewers, what, what sort of style is the making up of your mind? It's the poppiest of the, of the five tracks on, on the EP. And then we know, as we've said, the, the EP will be up uh, and available from the 24th of May. Um, so that's the first part of this journey, isn't it? We we started off um, with the material, partly recorded, we've um, finished the recordings, we've got it mixed, we've mastered, we've produced it. That part of the journey's done. So what's what's the next part of the journey, Keith? Um, well, we want to preserve this making of maybe Never Channel because even though we've reached a pretty significant stage with the release of the single and the next single and then the EP, um, I suppose you could say, you might argue that journey is completed, but it isn't. So we're going to have to put a few more things on there to, uh, to remind you how we're carrying on and how we're actually completing the, um, 
the composition, the writing, the recording and the mixing and mastering of the music that follows. So that's what we'll be doing on this channel. Mm. Um, but we need you to remind we need to remind you to uh, to listen to the music on yeah. the Maybe Never channel, um, which is our, our second second branch of our, if you like, our finished product. But that doesn't mean that there's not more to tell about how we're doing it. I, I guess a bit of the process that we didn't film and has been a huge part of the last sort of couple of weeks um, has been the promotion of the music through the social media sites. Um, if you get a chance, by all means, check out our social media. It's um, just uh, search for Maybe Never on Facebook and Instagram and you should, should be able to find us. Um, I think, as we've discussed uh, in the past, because YouTube has decided that as a channel we are about music production and the process of mixing, that's not kind of what we set out to be. We kind of set out to be more of a vlog, more of a documentary on the process mm. of putting together a track, a song, a CD, and what was involved in that. And I kind of think that's where we want to get back to, which might not be, you know, to the advantage of YouTube and what its algorithm wants us to do. Um, but what do you guys think? Um, obviously, you followed us. We're, we're now at around 800 subscribers. We've had over 50,000 views of our videos. Um, what do you guys want to see? Um, as Keith says, the next big step for us now is the album. We've already got a lot of material uh, written. Um, we're just upgrading the, uh, the studio to recording 48 kilohertz 32-bit float, which needs a serious computer upgrade in order for us to do that. Do you want to see more of us doing the recording process? Are you more interested in how we've written the music, we're arranging it? Put a comment below, please. Tell us what, what you want to see. And, you know, we will continue this channel uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, I think I'll pull this some more there. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we do want to keep you guys on board with us. We, we want you to follow our journey. Um, not quite sure what content you want to see of that journey. So, you know, maybe we're a little bit puzzled by that because we thought that the, the video content about the making of, uh, of the video, for example, was equally interesting as part of the journey. But it hasn't attracted the viewers, so it's, it's a genuine question. Yeah. I suppose one of the questions that some of the viewers might be wondering is to why we set up two separate um, yeah. YouTube channels. So we have the making of Maybe Never, which um, you're watching now, and we have our music channel, which is Maybe Never. And the, the last 24 hours has kind of demonstrated why we wanted to do it that way. We've uploaded the Hard Times music video, which is, you know, uh, done pretty well. And because we had to use another track called Tides In For Good, which was a, an instrumental track, to set up all the uh, artist pages and um, the YouTube links, um, which there is a video, I'll leave the description below as to uh, how we did that. Um, we wanted to make sure that if you wanted to go and watch the music video, that the suggested video after that would be another music video. And so Maybe Never is just going to be where all our music is uploaded and the videos of uh, those tracks. And the making of Maybe Never is all about how we've got there. What I didn't want to happen was for you to watch a music video and then the next suggested video would be you know, how to set up a mixing template. It, it just doesn't go together. Um, so we'd like you to go over to Maybe Never. Please subscribe and hit the like button over on our hard times. We'd like to build that channel, um, but all that's going to be on that channel, I say all, is the actual results of the work, which are 
the finished completed songs and we will include all the songs on that channel uh, over time and, and a, a music video to go with them. I don't know, it's a journey. If, um, if you set out on a journey and you know what's going to happen on the way and you know what's going to happen at the end, um, then it becomes less interesting. Mm. So um, let's keep the focus of this channel on, on the journey and the surprises and shocks and uh, good things and bad things that happen to us. I guess the other thing that was um, part of our intention for the YouTube sort of journey was that we know for the album there are certain areas where we need collaboration, where we're looking for musicians with different skill sets. Uh, for example, you know, we're, we're looking for some jazz piano playing. I can play the piano, but I am not a jazz pianist by a long stretch of the imagination. Um, we've talked about wanting a gospel choir. We've talked about maybe trying to record some real live uh, bagpipes from mm, one of the oh tracks yeah. that we've got um, and all the retuning that was involved in that process. Um, so we were hoping that YouTube would open up possibilities and horizons for us to collaborate with other musicians. Uh, again, if you guys have uh, got any experience of that or are interested and in, you're local to uh, Sheffield here in the UK, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So. I shall read them out, and you can cross check. Very good. I need glasses on for this because I'm struggling to read. <laughs> Bloody things. I have Colin, who was the university lecturer that um, supported us by providing all the equipment that the students could use to film the video. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the contact with the students. Yeah. 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 Um, James, that's the guy at the drama studio yeah. who uh, supported us and gave us a fantastic deal there. Taylor, who was the lighting technician, yeah. who did a fantastic job. We have Mike, who is a cellist, and I mistakenly um, <laughs> put him down as Mick on the video. So he was apologies. fine with it. Oh, apologies, Mike. My son still knows him as Bike. Oh, Bike. <laughs> <laughs> there was Helen, uh, the lovely Helen, who was the production manager for the music video. Um, Martin, Martin Archer. Now, he was involved. Paul and I had a long conversation with Martin over lunch because he gave us the guidance about how to publish and to distribute the music from his experience. And that was the bit we were really struggling yeah, with. That was really useful. So that was really useful. Yeah. Thanks for that, to Martin. Then a big shout out to Claire, she was the director of the music video and it was her debut uh, attempt at directing music video. She's got a huge amount of experience in uh, directing theatre mm. and she did a fantastic job. We've got Russ, now Russ, so good old Russ was the bass player of the band when we first, when I first joined the band, when I was yeah. 18. <coughs> Um, Russ was the bass player. I think you were 17. You were 17. Well, you 17, were 17, yeah. 17, yeah. 17 and a half. 40 <laughs> years ago. Then. Yeah. And um, the bugger decided to move to London for a career. God knows why. But, you know, uh, his was. Uh, but he um, wanted to be part of the music video and we were short of a violinist for the string quartet. So he volunteered, never played the violin in his life before. He does now. He does now, but through <laughs> yeah. the, the guidance of Anna, who was the first violinist, um, he did a very convincing job. Uh, but also he was designed and put together the artwork for the CD. So big shout out to Russ. Yeah. And Good job he took up that other career then. It is really. Yeah. Um, and we're hoping Russ will be coming back up to the studio to put down a couple of bass lines for the uh, the new album mm -hmm. so you'll get to see Ross then we have Jake uh, Jake came up with the original concept for the timed out CD so big thanks to Jake we've got Sam Sam was the mastering engineer and there <laughs> 
There was a comment on one of our uh, YouTube videos on the mastering that, and, and Sam was great. Um, he came to our studio, um, he gave us some feedback on our mixers, and then I went and spent an afternoon at his studio when he was doing the mastering. And we filmed and all that. Yeah, that's all on video. And that's yeah. all on the channel. But there is the Produce Like a Pro, um, Warren Huart's channel. He sometimes has uh, a guy called Daniel Nelson, who I'm a great admirer of. He does some fantastic work. And we got a comment from him, which I was dead chuffed. And the comment was, I like Sam's jumper. <laughs> So I was dead pleased that we got a comment from you know one of the YouTube gurus of music production, but the comment was about my mastering engineer's jumper. So, uh, but good on you, Sam. Thank you very much for your support. A nice jumper. Then there's Paul. Paul was the AV guy uh, behind the scenes for the music video. So while ever we were playing, we obviously needed to um, have a guide track and Paul was the sound guy that was uh, was controlling that for us. Tarek, he was the director of photography. He, uh, he was the, the main videographer for the music video. Uh, so we'd like to thank Tarek. And he was one of the students that I'd met at a um, uh, sort of film uh, social event uh, in Sheffield. And not only did I meet Tarek, but I met Heather who was the assistant director, who is in here somewhere, but we'll get to her in a short while. Anna, she was the first violinist and uh, took charge of the old string quartet there. So thank you very much, Anna, that was great. Susan was the viola player and uh, she was actually featured um, on the video, um, in fact, opening up her viola case as she arrived, which was part of the storyline. Uh, for the music video, so thank you, Susan. Um, not involved in the production of the CD or music video, but um, part of what we've used as a lot of our promotion material. Uh, a shout out to Steve Braithwaite, who was the photographer that came and did a, a, a quite a long photography session here. So uh, we're, we're thanking Steve for that. And then the next one is Annabelle. Um, Annabelle was uh, the, uh, the dancer in the music video and uh, she worked very hard that day and there was one particular part of her routine where she rears up onto her toes. God knows how many times she did that yeah. during the video. Um, how her toes survived that, I don't know. So I hope they recovered, Annabelle. Uh, there's Heather. Heather is the assistant director. She was the other student and um, she kind of uh, held Claire's hand. Claire held her hand and together they did a, a spanking job. We're so pleased with the outcome of the music video. So a big shout out to Heather. Then there's Luke. Now Luke is just um, here for being generally a good guy. From day one of us wanting to produce this music video, uh, Luke has been along and contributed his thoughts, his ideas, uh, and has lent his support. So we like Luke. Big shout out to Luke. We have one to Gary. Gary is the lead vocalist on the third track of the EP, uh, which is called Seven Kinds of Pain. Kinds of Pain. Um, he's got a real husky deep voice and uh, he was just absolutely perfect for that. Uh, and sticking with vocalists, we've got to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to Vernon. Um, he's done four of the tracks on the EP and he came to do the videoing. I hope he doesn't mind me saying, but he was not a particularly well man on the day and how he got through that day, we don't know. We love you, mate. Thank you very much for all your support. And yeah, you've just got a unique voice. So we're very blessed to have you on, the, uh, on our music. Nearly there. Liam, Liam helped on a couple of the tracks with the mixing. Uh, I learned a huge amount from Liam. Um, he's got his own label. He's, he's um, more into producing EDM. Um, great musician, great mix engineer. Uh, so really thankful that we had his input on a couple of the tracks. The bass playing on 
some kinds of pain. I wanted a upright double bass sort of feel to that track and we can't play upright bass even though Keith <coughs> did a fantastic job in the <laughs> music video. Um, but John, uh, he had a, a, a MIDI upright bass so he came to the studio and put that track down so thank you for John for that. The original bass playing on two of the tracks was recorded I would say about 20 years ago and a good friend of mine Nick uh, came along and um, we spent a couple of sessions putting down this bass. Um, I'm not sure that Nick actually knows yet that his bass playing has been published. Um, so this might come as a surprise to Nick now, but we, we will be uh, giving him a, a copy of the CD, of course. And last, but by no means least, to the guy that created the haunting sounds of the solo in Hard Times, and when you get to hear it, a brilliant sax solo on Seven Kinds of Pain, uh, to Mr. Nigel Manning. Uh, an absolute superstar and um, again we want to thank him for the time that he gave us both in the studio and for the music video. All present and correct. Jolly so, good. Yeah, yeah I mean it's great for actually covering again in depth yeah. how many people it took and how much effort and the variety of roles mm. just putting out one piece of music accompanied by a video. So she confides his mind to speed Love's an overdrive commodity To plug in in times of Wondering where